All right, well, it's really good to be here today, and I want to uh, kind of jump into a little bit of a different topic. We do develop real estate in Nicaragua. It was our very first uh, large project. I actually got my start in Belize back in 1998. I bought a small resort on Ambergus Key. I'm sure some of you guys have heard of Ambergus Key. Uh, Madonna made it famous back in the, uh, in the 80s, and, uh, and then uh, uh, Temptation Island was shot there, and, and it's been long known as a diving and fishing destination, fly fishing especially, uh, and that was 1998. And in 2000, we bought a huge piece of property in Nicaragua, and in 2002, I talked to my wonderful new bride and said, hey, honey, would it be all right if we moved to Nicaragua for two or three years to get this you know, new project that we just uh, purchased, this new property, Grand Pacifica? It'd be okay if we moved there for you know, two, three years and get it started. And she said, yeah, sure. We had a two-year-old daughter at the time, and it was, uh, it was wonderful, right? I mean, we, we went there, and now, 11 years later, we're still living in Nicaragua. And I got to say, I didn't see it coming. Neither of us did. Neither my wife nor myself saw it coming. But we went to Nicaragua to develop our project there, um, and we fell in love with the place. We fell in love with the people. And I understand Nicaragua is not the right place for, for many people because, I mean, it has a lot of political baggage and stuff like that. Um, but I'm a big boots-on-the-ground kind of guy, and I think one of the things, if anything else came out of this, to encourage you to you know, take a look at Nicaragua specifically. Don't exclude it from your list. I have a question. It's going to be hard for me to see show of hands, but I am curious, and listen carefully, how many folks in the audience are not interested, not interested in, in moving to Central or South America? Show of hands. Come on. All right. Well, some of you. How many folks would consider moving to Central or South America? That's fantastic. Okay. Um, and, and that's interesting because a Porter Stansbury uh, crowd generally are offshore-oriented, which is, which is wonderful to see. And, and the reason I ask that question, how many people would not want to move overseas, is because this presentation is not about moving overseas. This presentation is about serving the people who want to move overseas. And I want to make that distinction very clear. Yes, our company develops real estate in Belize, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and Ecuador. We are developing real estate in five countries of Central and South America, for the folks who want to move, retirees, residents, people who want to move to that part of the world. That's who we serve. So if you want to move, great. We might have a beautiful piece of property, a home or a condominium that would be just right for you because in those five countries, we've got a lot of different geographies. But if you get the joke that there are a whole bunch of people, those baby boomers that James was talking about earlier today, those baby boomer retirees, if you get the joke that a whole bunch of them are moving south over the next 18 to 20 years, when I say south, one more leap further than Florida, okay, we're in business to serve them. And this is the opportunity to work with our company to help serve those people. Waves of change are waves of opportunity. Del Webb picked this up back in the late 60s, early 70s, and he said, my goodness, there's going to be a whole group of people getting out of cold weather North America and moving south in retirement. And you know what? He was right. He got the big demographic shift right. But he also got two more things right. Del Webb had three strokes of genius. Big demographic shift, people moving south. Number two, check the top one out right there. Concrete, steel, and lumber make the buildings. But people make the community. It's all about people. It's, it's about turning new neighbors into fast friends in the spirit of getting together. Del Webb understood that. He was really the first developer to understand that it was about community. And his third stroke of genius was this, that not everybody wants to live in the desert of Arizona. Some people want to live in California, Texas, the Piedmonts. So he had three strokes of genius. People are going to be moving. They want community. They want friends and neighbors. And they want geographic choice. Well... The marketplace rewards well-executed genius, and Pulte bought out Del Webb for $1.8 billion. So when you come to Central and South America, there are only two companies doing what we do, ECI and another one. Two, serving consumers with community, geographic choice. We are the only company, by the way, serving the middle class. The other company serves people who want to buy $750,000 villas and up. 
we serve the middle class. We are the only company doing that. This is a chance for you to own shares of our company, okay? Own shares of our company, right? Be a part of serving these millions of consumers who are coming to this part of the, or that part of the world. I'm sorry, I'm in Florida today, okay? Uh, you can get the information, come see me on some of the details. But what we're really talking about for folks here today is capitalizing on the next wave. Our company was started 16 years ago as a development company. We have 260 shareholders in our company, folks just like yourselves. We have one hedge fund, one real estate hedge fund. All the rest are individuals like yourself who have decided they want to serve the consumers and capitalize on the next big wave. And this is it. This is Dell Webb Redo. Number two, 10,000 baby boomers retire every day and will for the next 18 years. Folks, this is a huge demographic shift, similar to the one that Dell Webb picked up on. And when Zogby did a survey, by the way, I think uh, Rachel Jensen is handing out some forms. We're going to do a drawing later, win a free week in Belize. Um, we'd love to have you come down and stay with us. But on the back of this form are some places you can check. You can actually get this survey. I'll send you the Zogby survey. I'll send you an Ernst & Young report as well. Um, Fill out the form, check the box, let me email you. This data is incredible because when Zogby Company surveyed 103,000 U.S. citizens, a huge statistical sampling, what they found was that 11% of those folks were interested in owning property overseas and 17% of those said Latin America was their first choice. So we're really talking about a prospect pool of somewhere around 4 million folks. TD Waterhouse did a survey of Canadian citizens. It's a much bigger percentage. 45% of Canadians plan to spend a month or more outside of Canada every winter. I think we understand why. Okay? It's a smaller demographic, only 9 million, but it's still 4 million people. Folks, this is a huge wave, and it's an opportunity to capitalize on it. But surveys are surveys. Surveys are when people call you up while you're eating dinner, right? They're calling you up, and you're just trying to get somebody off the phone because you want to go back to dinner or the TV show you're watching. This is actually what's happening right now. Five million North Americans live outside of North America, and over a half a million U.S. retirees live outside the United States right now, today. So it's not going to happen. It is happening. Why are they coming? A higher quality of life on a limited budget. How would you like to have no chores for $125 a month? We do. It's one of the reasons my wife will never move back to the U.S. We, <laughs> I, we have no chores for $125 a month, full-time maid. Okay? We have a lady that comes to the house and gives her a massage for 16 bucks. And we have organic fruits and vegetables. Now, you get a whole paycheck, I mean, a, a, an organic tomato is five bucks, right? I mean, we have organic fruits and vegetables, meats and cheeses, and it is so inexpensive. And it's inexpensive all over Central America. So when we're talking about investing in our company, we're talking about investing in ECI, Exotic Key International. It owns all of the properties that we have listed in our materials, and it owns the operational businesses as well. So when you invest with us, you invest in the holding company that owns all of these assets. Right now, it's Costa Rica, Belize, Panama, Nicaragua, I mentioned Ecuador because we have a letter of intent in place, and April 30th is our closing date on a piece of property in Ecuador. And unless something horrible happens and the deal goes sideways, uh, we will be in five countries by April 30th. Uh, this is a picture of Nicaragua, a map of Nicaragua. Grand Pacific is due west of the capital city, Managua. It's a beautiful beach and golf resort. We built a golf course, condos, homes. We have uh, about 25 full-time residents living on the property today. Um, it's a viable community that we, uh, we built there starting in 2000. Uh, we're also in Ambergris Key, Belize. Uh, Ambergris Key is a little island off the coast. It feels a lot like Key West would have felt maybe 30, 40, 50 years ago. It's a neat little island. We have a tennis resort, uh, beach, and off-beach properties. Uh, again, for folks who are looking to reside there, live there. North American standard product in Belize for very, very affordable prices. And we're going to look at what that is. In Costa Rica, we have a huge piece of property, 1,100 acres, just under two miles of coastline, and about five miles of canal and river, a lot like the intercoastal waterway. Okay, beautiful piece of property that will be developed as a marina community. And in Panama, we partnered with a, a group, uh, Los Islotes. We came in and we took a small position in their property. And uh, it's, uh, again, beautiful piece of property in Panama for people who are looking to go to Panama. And what's interesting is, 
you know, we talk about where we are, okay, Costa Rica, Panama, Nicaragua, and Belize. This is a real principal set of geographies. But where are we going next? Because I am consumer focused. I always believe in keeping the horse in front of the cart. And the horse pulling the cart is always the consumer. And what do consumers want who are coming to Latin America? Well, they want different things. Some people want beach. Some people want a Southern California climate like Nicaragua. That's a very much a Southern California. Uh, we did a beach and golf resort there. Some people want Ambergris Key, a little English-speaking island, a lot like Key West or the Cayman Islands you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago. And we built a tennis resort there. People, some people want Panama because they want to be in Panama. And some people want Costa Rica because they're boaters and they have boats. But there are three other geographies that are so important. A vineyard community, a vineyard community like you might find in Napa Valley. We'll do that in Chile. Something in the highlands. We say Costa Rica highlands. It'll probably be the highlands. Okay, and then the Ecuador acquisition that we're happening right now. See, this, act, this picture was taken at Doug Casey's project in Cafayate. I went down and met with him and his project manager a few years ago. And, and you know what? If you've got, if, look, rich people, and, and a lot of you are wealthy. I won't call you rich people, but a lot of you are wealthy. And if you wanted to go write a check for a half a million or a million bucks for something, no big deal. Go write the check and have a Napa Valley experience. Have something very high end. But if you've got $250,000 and you want that retirement experience, good luck. Our company can deliver it, and we will deliver it to middle-class North Americans very, very shortly. Tropical Highlands is where they grow coffee. It's 70 degrees at night. It's 80 degrees in the day, every day of the year. It's always spring. A lot of people want that geography in retirement. And then something in Ecuador, top-ranking retirement destination. A lot of the magazines, uh, Agora Sister Publication, uh, International Living, has ranked Ecuador the number one retirement destination five or six years in a row. It is a phenomenal country. A lot of people want it. Talk about why we're here. We're here about raising money. We're equity funded. It's how we grow our business. 260 shareholders raised just under $25 million over the last 16 years. This is how we do it. We're equity funded. We're growing our business. We pay dividends. We generate a profit. We pay dividends. It's all in the PPM. If you want to see it, happy to show it to you. I want to talk about the team for a second. But before I get to the team, I want to talk about a business plan. We have a 200-page business plan. It's important to have a business plan because a business plan is a roadmap. A business plan says, how am I going to get from point A to point B? But let me tell you, in 2008, how many people are in the real estate business or had real estate in 2008? All right, everybody. In 2008, we have a great business plan. And you know what it was worth? Nothing. Nothing. The only reason we're in business today is because we have a team of people who are exceptional. When that curveball came straight at our head at 101 miles an hour, like it did to every developer in the world, right, U.S., Canada, Central America, South America, South Florida, Las Vegas. I mean, boy, that curveball was brutal, and it came at everybody hard and fast. We had great people. Here they are. Their bios are in this business plan. This business plan is a viable business plan. But from 2008, 2012, that four or five-year period, it wasn't the business plan. It was the people. It's always about the people. And we have a team of people that is exceptional. We serve the middle class. I've said that a few times. Our products may not appeal to you. They may not appeal to you. But understand that if you want to impress your friends, go buy a fancy Park Avenue restaurant. If you want to make a lot of money, go buy a Chick-fil-A. Okay? We are a meat and potatoes investment. We buy real estate. We develop real estate. We sell real estate. We make a profit and we pay dividends, and we serve the middle class. We serve the middle class because it's an exceptionally underserved market, and we can make good profits, fair profits, by doing it, and we can distribute those profits to our shareholders. Look at the price points. At Grand Pacifica, a beach and golf resort, a beach and golf resort, that second home right there, that three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath home for $239,000, 100 yards from the ocean, in a beach and golf resort community. That is the sweet spot of the middle class market. We can serve them with high speed internet, great water pressure, neighbors, friends, a golf course, a clubhouse, swimming pools, 
for $239,000. And in Belize, we can serve that same consumer with a tennis resort, tennis club, for $129,000. This is exceptionally priced, high-value product for middle-class consumers in places they want to be. We're getting ready to tear down our oceanfront property in Belize. We're going to build oceanfront condos that start under $200,000 with all of those amenities, again, on a beautiful Caribbean island looking at the reef. We work with a company called Key Bank. We have pre-approved financing for North Americans. That is a game changer. Very few companies can offer financing in the region. We can, we do. It helps people achieve that goal of owning property overseas. The other thing we do is we work with First American and Stewart. We get title insurance on everything we buy so that our customers can have the peace of mind that they have title insurance if they choose to buy it. When we go to conferences like the AARP convention or the National Association of Realtor Convention, uh, we have a booth, and our booth basically says retire to paradise because what we do is we go to the consumer market on the front end and we say, you know what? Well, yeah, which picture up here? What geography? Are you guys golfers? Do you want to live in a vineyard community? Are you worried about learning a new language? Well, maybe Belize is right for you because it's an English-speaking country. And what we do is we take the sales paradigm and turn it on its head. So instead of trying to sell somebody a condo in Costa Rica because I'm a developer in Costa Rica, I can offer a consumer a product that they're looking for in multiple jurisdictions. It really does change things. We serve people with real community. Del Webb is right. It's all about the community. It's about the relations between people who live in these jurisdictions. We give them things to do and neighbors to do them with. Okay, very, very important. Great times for people to enjoy. And we're going to serve them for the next 20 years. The next 20 years. This is not a flash in the pan. This is a 20-year macro trend, and we have established a company that's now 16 years old to serve them for a long, long, long time. Why might you want to invest in our company? Determination, dividends, and diversification. Determination? We've been in business now 16 years. 16 years. Some great years between, you know, 98 and 2008. And then some horrible years from 2008 to 2012. And now things are picking back up again. Okay? Determination. Great people toughing it out. Diversification. With one investment, you will have real estate assets in today four countries and in about 60 days, five countries. And within 18 to 24 months, seven countries. One investment, your investment will be diversified across seven countries with operating businesses as well. And here's something that's really cool. You're not just investing in an idea. Yes, there are 200 pages of well-thought-out ideas right here. But what you're also investing in is almost six miles, and four, six miles of beachfront real estate. That is an asset of worth and 4,000 acres, a tangible asset. You're making an investment in something that's really there with a great idea and great people to carry it out. So if you want to invest with us, we just ask that you... Uh